Jason, you talked about how the, the threes were going to come. Uh, seems like they did come this game. Uh, how how much does does that change? You know, just the offense that we've been seeing over the past few weeks. Yeah, I think um, we've talked about it um, each game or at practice about the shots that we're getting. Um, we've had them all year. Um, the seasons are about makes and misses. We're making them early in the season. Um, and I, again, uh, our focus on the defensive end has uh, maybe taken some of our legs uh, in, a, in a positive way. Um, uh, the focus of playing defense and, and protecting one another is at a high right now. And uh, maybe our offense maybe took a step back from making threes, but I thought today uh, PJ and D. Jones uh, set the tone for us uh, with the threes. And I thought Luca, um, our leader, set the tone early. He came out aggressive. And then our other leader and Kai, he set the tone at, uh, in the third with the pace. And so uh, when guy, when those guys get going, somebody's going to be open. And I thought just the plays, you know, for one another on both ends, offensively and defensively, was at a high level. And then when you guys uh, made the run pull away in the third, what did what did you see? Um, defense. Um, just again, I thought Kai set the tone for us. Uh, he was uh, at the pace, um, understanding the stops. We want to get out and run. We talked about that uh, uh, before the game. That we we we're not a team that just can walk it up. You know, we can we can do that if we have to, but we want to get out and get easy baskets. Also, we want the ball to touch the paint. And we want to share the ball. And, and so I thought uh, the guys did that. Uh, I thought Kai set the tone in the third, and the guys followed. You guys limited them to 37% shooting, and Fox had 18. I think Sabonis had 11 or 12. Uh, who gets the most credit for that? Uh, listen, uh, those two are all stars. We just try to make it tough on them. It's a group effort. Uh, everybody's not just one person. Uh, I thought the guys executed the game plan. Uh, we're trying to make it tough. Uh, they miss some shots that they normally don't, um, and so we capitalize on that uh, by not giving them second opportunities. And so, uh, understanding uh, Fox is one of the best guards in this league, and Sabonis is one of the best bigs, and we just try to throw as many bodies as we could to make it tough on them. And, uh, and the group did that tonight. Specifically, when Lively was guarding Sabonis, do you, do you think that is a you know the success that he had is that is that a sign of his maturity, the way he's developed? Um, yeah. When you look at the first two meetings, um, Sabonis had his way, and so I think when you see uh, Lively's growth uh, from the start of the season uh, to today is, is big. Um, you know, also role, um, being a starter and now coming off the bench, uh, he's accepted that and he's trying to do everything to help the team win, and that's what it's all about at this time of the year, is about wins. And uh, again, we put ourselves in a position on the road against a very talented team and, and came away with the W. Coach Kidd, you actually have four four players with four more uh, trades, but what I want to ask you uh, uh, with um, PJ Washington and Gafford, even though he was in uh, foul trouble, uh, they, they definitely make a, a, a total difference uh, for your team. Can you talk about you know what they add, at least from you know this meeting compared to the last two meetings with the Kings? Yeah, you know I, I think. Uh, Take away the, the opponent, they, they've helped us in, in so many areas. Uh, when you talk about the defensive side, uh, the physicality, uh, being able to guard, uh, being able to rebound the ball, being able to change shots, being able to block shots. I can go through the list uh, uh, on the defensive end. And then on the offensive end, they both have great hands. They both can put the ball in the basket. Again, PJ's ability um, to shoot the three helps us, and you can see that uh, in tonight's uh, matchup. Um, and then Gaff being able to control the paint, offensive rebounds, and being able to finish uh, when there's a small bottom up, it's something that you know we haven't had when we talk about 48 minutes of two centers being able to catch and finish. Um, but I, I think we all love their attitude and their character and what, what they're all about, and that's about the team and about winning and playing a role at, at the highest level. If you don't mind me saying it, does it kind of like take the, you know, the pressure with Gafford you know, being in there, kind of like take the pressure off a rookie like uh, Derek Lively? I think uh, the Live is up for the challenge. Uh, we don't look at anything as pressure. Uh, it's a challenge. Uh, th there's so many talented players in this league, and as a rookie, he's a he's a sponge. He wants to be he wor he wants to be good. He works at it. He's going to make some mistakes like vets. Uh, but I think uh, just understand when you have a teammate like that uh, that will pass you the baton as a, a relay, 
uh, you, you embrace that and you want to be successful. You don't want to let your, part, your partner down. And, and right now that combination of those two are playing at a high level for us. Um, how do you assess Timmy's performance tonight? And also, um, you just did it with Utah. You're going to have to do it again here. Um, how do you keep up that consistency playing the same team? Twice? Yeah, um, great question. Uh, when we look at Timmy, I think just the shots that he's taking right now, his confidence, uh, putting two, stacking uh, Utah and tonight, putting two games together, you can see that he's starting to turn the corner. Um, and we're going to need him. I've said that before. Um, some probably disagree, but that's cool. Um, but the, just looking at the uh, the things that he does for us on the offensive end, you can see that here in the last two games. Again, we need his leadership and his toughness and uh, his ability to make tough shots. But being able to make plays, he's starting to you know find his teammates, and that just makes the game easier for everybody. Just want this little sizzle, not a little long sizzle that you're on now. Do you feel like you're sending maybe some messages to the league and, and especially the Western Conference? No, we're, we're not saying any messages. We're, we're just trying to, you know, take what's in front of us and, and, and play what the game that's in front of us, take the one possession that's in front of us to, to get better. Um, we let the, the media um, do, do the talking for us. So we, we, wanna, we understand where we are at, how big this road trip is, and this is only game two of, of five. And again, as you brought up, we got we got to play the Kings again, and uh, we're going to have to make some adjustments. And it will be a different team on Friday, and the beauty of that is that we just went through that with Utah, and when we talk about a different team, they will be fresh and ready to go. Jason, when you guys put Luca and Kyrie together, there was a lot of discussion in the media, and we talked about how good this team could be defensively, and that was in question. Uh, this last 10 games, I think you're fourth in the league in defensive rating. It's at a high level. Like, uh, What are you seeing there? Unpack that a little bit for me and, and how sustainable is that level of play on that end? Yeah, I think uh, with the additions of Gaff and, um, and EJ, we just didn't have that. Uh, you know, understanding what those two do for us on the defensive end, their length, their athleticism. Uh, they're able to rebound the ball for us. They can rebound out of position. Uh, you know, when you talk about their Jones Jr., his uh, jumping ability is like no other, so he can go get rebounds out of position. But again, they're just focused on the game plan and what they have to do and who's in front of them. Uh, it's not easy guarding Fox or Sabonis. Um, and so uh, PJ was asking to guard one through five. He did that tonight. He guarded Sabonis, he guarded Fox. He never complains. He wants to go out there and do his job at the highest level. But everybody's playing for one another uh, on both ends. And sometimes in the season, um, as much as coaches, we would like their defense, our defense to be perfect uh, in training camp. It sometimes takes a little time. Um, but there's no better time to play defense uh, in March when you're playing for something. And then again, our offense, we believe, is one of the best in the league with our two leaders, with Luka and Kai. So uh, we lean on those guys to be quarterbacks, and they trust their teammates when they let go of the ball. Uh, speaking of Gaff, like he had a pass where he like caught the ball and he just passed it back. Um, how do you feel like when they're doing things like that on the help defense? Yeah, I think when you when you look at what Gaff's ability to his great hands, being able to finish in traffic, uh, but then also to be able to, to just read the situation, we understand what's coming next is the pressure uh, take the taking away Luca and Kai, and our role players are going to have to play at a high level. So uh, this is a great experience for everybody to go through it. Um, and when you have X and when you can have you know three ball handlers out there, that helps. But when you have centers who can make plays on the run, who can uh, make passes uh, to their teammates, to the open guy, that helps. And uh, I think that's just the big trust that we have right now.